Here we go then, Dynamo Zagreb versus Aston Villa, last 16 of the Europa League lose, and the quest is over. So I think we're all expecting this to be quite a tough proposition. Aston Villa with their Premier League money have an embarrassment of Richards, and even if we were to sneak past them, Feyenoord have already won. Arve Salzburg have already won. Rangers are already 4-0 up against Stuttgart. We've already got Wolfsburg. We've got Lille, Sporting, Newcastle, all looming large in this competition. It's going to be very difficult to reach a European final, but whilst we're in it, we can at least believe since the last episode where we were strolling our way, semi-convincingly, almost, against Danish outfit Michelin. We've had a big top-of-the-table clash against Osijek, which we went a goal down in. We won 3-1. By the time we were a goal down, they were already reduced to 10 men for a foul that was a little bit innocuous, if I'm honest. But we came roaring back. We scored just before half-time. Then Renier got one in the 49th minute. Ishek scored as well in the 62nd. That gave us a comfortable five-point lead at the top of the table until... We drew 3-3 with Goritza in the next game and handed a little bit of the momentum back to Osiek again. So the lead is now just two points at the summit of the table. Both of us are well clear of Hajduk, a club, of course, who are Dinamo's fiercest rivals and who we play between the two Aston Villa legs. So we've got lots of big games coming up over the next few days. And we're going to try and get out there against Aston Villa and give them a really good game in the home leg to see whether we can just leave it so that there is at least something to play for for the second. We've got Volstead back fit, available in goal. We've got Kompen, Bresnic and Pembele raiding down the flanks. Avia and Serdar are going to be our central defenders. We've got Parashik and Pavic, our first choice midfield two just in front of them. Ishek now playing well over on the right wing. And we're going to give old Renier the nod today. He's started the last couple of games and done pretty well, so we're going to give him the start over on the left, ahead of Gabriel Vidovic, who has just been off form a little bit recently, and maybe a lot of the speculation about the clubs that are interested in him might just be a distraction. Renier's going to start, he's going to be on the bench, and then the Magic Man and Auntie Pilchards are going to be up front. Pilchards, eight goals, five assists, 15 league starts, but five in eight in Europe is a little bit more impressive and at 18 years old. Hopefully, he will get on the score sheet tonight as we get out there and take on Aston Villa. So the body language did not look good during the team talk. We struggled to rouse the troops. Renier has hesitant body language. Not sure why he is so cautious about today's game. They seem to be matching up our formation slightly. Perhaps their wingers are slightly in advance of ours. We have been just working on a second formation in the background with our two wide players pushed up into those advanced slots. So if we go a goal or two down early, we could always switch to that formation and match Aston Villa up exactly. They are going to be pretty confident, I think, of getting past Croatian opposition and breezing into the last eight. We are very much the underdogs for this game, but that's just how we like it in this series. And we are five minutes in, and we have had the opening shot, and we're in possession of the ball as we reach the first highlight with Renier striding to the edge of the box and scoring ludicrously early for us. Way too early. We're in trouble now. We're a goal up after seven minutes. We've angered the beast. We've poked the proverbial bear. But Renier justifies their start in the team as they receive the ball with their back to goal, beat two men, run to the edge of the area, pass the ball into the corner of the net, and that is worthy of a little bit of praise straight away, I would say. I hit the wrong button. I go with encourage rather than praise. The players, well, they just ignore me as they normally do. And we're now up to four shots. Just that one on target, but it went in and we reached the halfway stage of the first period. And we're looking pretty good so far. Maybe we can have another go at hitting praise. There we go. I'm so used to being nil-nil on 30 minutes and trying to encourage the team that I hit the wrong button earlier. We've praised them now, and it's led to a corner that Beckham Avia gets up at the near post. He plants a header. It was going in the top corner of the goal. Stolashik, the Aston Villa goalkeeper, saves it. That didn't even seem to be the highlight as they have the ball at the back. Is it going to mean that they are going to have a stinging move from their own goal kick? 
or are we going to rob them of the ball and try and counter-attack on them? I'm pretty sure it's the former. Zhao Pedro races into the box. It flicks off the top of the crossbar. It goes over Volstead, now reinstalled as first-choice goalkeeper. And the match stats are starting to turn in Aston Villa's favour a little bit. They hit the crossbar for the second time in the game. And from the rebound, Paulinha seems to have forced the ball home. It was Dia B who has the free kick. We don't get to see what happens as we try and scroll desperately out. We can just see that our players were motionless as Aston Villa did all of the work. And the same player has another free kick. This one doesn't cannon off the woodwork. It goes harmlessly over the bar. They've now had 11 shots. They've got an XG of treble hours. It was a healthy start to the game. It's been uncomfortable viewing since. We've still got a half to go. And we're back underway. Pembele booked and on a 6.4. Auntie Pilchards is on a 6.5. I think if we can get to Birmingham tied in this game, then I think that will be a decent result given how the first half went. We've made it through the next portion of the game without any highlights. And in fact, on 65 minutes, I think we can throw some fresh bodies on. I did say if we could take this to the second leg and still have something to play for, I would be pleased. At the moment, it looks like we very much have got that. As one of our substitutes, who's come on over on the right wing for Ishak, promptly gives the ball back to Aston Villa. And they're coming forward from their own goal kick once more. They've got Blakey. He's been on the buses all day, but he's finished his shift. And now he gives the ball to Pulse, to Polina. That's the third time that they have rattled the crossbar. Two at the other end, one at this. And we're living dangerously, I would say. On 80 minutes, we've still got more very tired bodies out there. They've played a lot of games recently. Let's freshen it up with the cavalry. Now we're inside the final five minutes. We've got possession of the football. Here is Seschler, who came on for Ishek. There's a little overhead kick. It's impressively acrobatic. It's also offside. If that had gone in, it wouldn't have counted, but I think I'd have been out of my seat anyway, given the quality of the strike. We're into stoppage time now. We've got an encouraging draw against Aston Villa. We weren't outclassed like I thought we would be. We've matched them in terms of the shots, and we've had the same amount of possession as them. It's going to be a tall order to qualify with the away leg to come. You never know, there's a chance. Okay, we're back for that second leg, but it's actually been a pretty eventful week. We played the Eternal Derby against Hajduk. We played a fully rotated squad. Only Volstead remained from the game that we just played against Aston Villa. But we won it 3-1 with goals from Seschler and a brace from Damian Pizarro. It was a double bonus of a week as well because Osiek were in action against bottom of the table Sibenyek. And they managed to lose their game going down 2-1. Sibenyak have only won four games all campaign before that one, so that was very much a bonus win. The gap at the top of the table is now back to five points. There's still plenty of games to go. We've got a five-point lead, but still ten league matches to try and navigate. But for this evening, focus turns completely to Aston Villa. We're going to mix things up a little bit. We've been umming and ahhing over recent games about whether to start Renier or whether to start Vidovic. Clearly, one of our best players. We're actually going to start them both tonight. Renier's going to go out onto the wing. Vidovic is going to come in as the deep lying forward in place of the magic man. Otherwise, we are as we were from the first leg. And we're going to go all the way over to Villa Park and see if we can pull off an unlikely away win. So we are a long way from where we started, all the way back at Moyola Park. We're a long way from our first European game back when we were Haverford West boss. Since then, we've had European football, I think, pretty much every season. We've had it with Haverford West. We've had it with Riga. We also qualify for Europe with Lokomotiva. Now we're in our campaign of European football with Dinamo. We're looking good to try and lift the league title now with that five-point gap. Can we go a round or two further in the Europa League? If we qualify from this game, we'll be in the quarterfinals. If we get a nice draw, we could make it to the semifinals. And hey, once we're in the semifinals, we can dream. But there is a huge obstacle in our way, and that obstacle is Aston Villa, who come forward early. Pembele robs them of the ball and gives it back. 
Volstead comes and claims it, showing why we're so grateful that he is back in the team. He plays it out to Svedar. For some reason, <laughs> gets it straight to the Aston Villa striker, and Volstead has to save us for a second time. I would say a comical piece of defending, except it was more disturbing, I think, than comical. Now Lee Dixon gets the ball back from B. He plays it back to Michael Tong, who must be deep into his 50s now, but still patrols the Aston Villa midfield. And now we've got a highlight for us, and we're threatening from set plays. Not on that occasion, as we send it in and it's played clear. But now Pembele's escaped into the box. He really has wriggled free. And rather than cut it back, he's had an effort. It's cannoned off the crossbar. That's a warning to Aston Villa that we are very much in this tie. As Tong plays the ball forward, it's Michael Parkinson now, raiding down the left-hand side. He checks back. He goes to Michael Tong in defence. They play it forward to Blakey and Pulse and Andreu. And if we'd have just pressed a little more there, I felt there was an opportunity to try and rob them of possession. Instead, it's out to Diaby, a danger man, forward to Lee Dixon, and into Adringra. I don't know whether they're looking at offside. I think they are. It's been ruled out. It was an early goal for the Aston Villa fans to celebrate. But they didn't go to a VAR review. The linesman has just popped their flag up. They've had one shot and one shot on target. We've had Four efforts so far. None of them have tripled the goalie. But they have amassed quite a high XG. So we're going to encourage the players because I think we are very much in this game. We've got a free kick that Ishek swings in. Been nodded down by Pembele. It's been fired over the bar. It's gone for a corner. So it must have got a nick or a save from the goalkeeper. Now Comp and Bresnik swings it in. Parky fires it clear. Ishek has the ball, brings it to Renier. We're back with Parashek. We are very light if we lose the ball on the halfway line there. Six shots, two on target. We are dominating Aston Villa. But they're through again, and it's Blakey. We've managed to shut that chance down. They're in again. Ramsey chases the ball. It goes behind for a goal kick. It is a frantic pedal to the metal game. Six shots versus three. Two on target versus one. An XG of 1.4 versus 0.7. It's all level at the break. Body language from Renier continues to be absolutely terrible. We might have to think about substituting him as Auntie Pilchards robs the player in the box. I was worried that they might dive in and give away a penalty. Instead, they're bringing us forward. And this might be a highlight for us. Vidovic has got the ball. He's dropped very deep. Pavic sends it through. Ishek is in. He's had a really good sight of goal. He only had the keeper to beat. He's fired it wide. Once more, we've gone close. Once more, I think we can encourage the players. Vidovic sends in a free kick. It has clipped off the corner where Post meets crossbar and goes behind for a goal kick. Aston Villa are making a lot of substitutions. They've got some very tired players. We look a lot fresher because we rested our team in that game against Hajduk. And the second 11 still managed to get a win. We're going to pause it on 71. We're going to have a look whether there's any performances that we might be able to make substitutions in order to try and improve. But we're still locked at 1-1 on aggregate. So Comp and Bresnich was on a 6.1. He has now exited the action. And we've bought on the Magic Man as well for Artie Pilchards. Vidovic is going to play up front with him. He's almost got a little header in the box there. But it's come on. To Leonardo Lello, the man that's come on for Compan Bresnic. We're doing all the pressing in this game. There's Isek. It's gone in. It's Renier. He's got his second of the tie. It's Stolishix has made an absolute mess of that chance. He's come out for a cross. He's flapped at it. Isek sends a high looping ball into the box. Their goalkeeper, he's got nowhere near it. And Renier lets it go over his shoulder. He swivels. On a bank vault, he sends it into the corner of the goal. And we are now 2-1 up as I celebrate and punch a monitor in one foul swoop. Renier's on the corners now. We've got plenty more substitutions we can make as people tire. Parkinson gets the ball away. Vidovic has it. He's had an effort. I think that might have clipped the woodwork as well. We are pressing for a second goal. We're going to check on the fitness. And then see whether we can see this game out for a heroic, albeit unlikely, win. 
We've made a couple more changes. We just need to try and see this game out. We're going to throw a little bit of time wasting on. We've got four added minutes. We've played two of those now. I don't think Aston Villa have an answer. And we have made progress against the old enemy into the quarterfinals of the Europa League. So as well as wins for us, bode a glimpse of progress. So have Newcastle, so have Lille and Arbe Salzburg and Rangers and Wolfsburg and Feyenoord. None of those will be easy ties if we get them, but Aston Villa wasn't an easy tie either, and we've won that 2-1, and we've now gone our furthest in European competition since the start of the quest. We're into the last eight of the Europa League, and we're going to see in our next episode who we get drawn against and whether we can go just one more round.